So, hello everybody and welcome again to the, I think this is the last lecture of the third week, is not it. So, therefore, uh, and I will, uh, it is also my last lecture on the influence of operating parameters and uh, what did we discuss? We first discussed the influence of phase superficial velocities, which I have discussed a number of terms earlier also. Next was the effect of diameter, which again what was discussed earlier. And after that, I came to the effect of conduit geometry, which we found that apart from the um, interesting phenomena, which are observed in macro channels, there are some other phenomena in micro channels. Then after geometry, we came to inclination and we discussed the general trends of inclination and also some special trends for rectangular conduits, which were observed in the multiphase flow laboratory of the chemical engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. Then again, we discussed some unique effects of entry section. This I would say is very relevant to the current topic of our discussion, because lot of researchers have said that uh, entry section plays quite a significant role in the distribution of the two phases in a micro channel, but not much has been investigated in this regard. And now, we come to the last topic, it is the effect of wall wettability which would also give us an idea regarding the effect of contamination of the wall or what might happen if the wall is not properly cleaned. And so, naturally if, if we take a tube, we expect some flow patterns, we find something very different just because the wall is contaminated. It can also happen that when we start the experiments with the new micro channel, we get some flow patterns as time progresses some amount of uh, fouling or some amount of contamination occurs and we get different flow patterns. This can also happen. So, therefore, the, uh, so th I would I thought that this particular topic should also be touched upon. Now, <coughs> mostly when we are performing experiments in micro channels, we usually very rarely we perform experiments on single tube micro channels. They are either wound together in the form of a helical coil or a serpentine or whatever it is. So, therefore, these particular results they were reported by Shao et al in a uh, helix uh, by helical tube, it is almost like the shell side fluid. Now, if we observe in a hydrophilic flow, these things more or less from our intuition we can say naturally what happens, the um, uh, tube or rather the liquid has a greater tendency to wet the tube wall. So, naturally since the liquid can wet the tube wall in this particular case, we see that dispersed flow pattern or the formation of bubbles much smaller than the conduit dimensions are formed. Under the same flow conditions, we find that in this particular case, the water does not wet want to wet the tube wall, because the tube wall has become hydrophobic. So, naturally for as a result what happens, we find so naturally th therefore, in order to maximize the contact with the wall, the small gas bubbles they tend to coalesce and they form elongated Taylor bubbles and these Taylor bubbles naturally they force the liquid to, to form in as slugs between the two bubbles and therefore, we form find that instead of bubbly flow, we now encounter isolated asymmetric bubble flow. It is sort of the confined bubble flow or whatever way you want to say, you can say it, but basically just to minimize the contact of liquid with the wall, instead of bubbly flow, now we encounter a asymmetric bubble sort of flow, where it, it exhibits the periodic character of the slug flow pattern. We keep on increasing the gas velocity, keeping the water velocity constant. This is a typical way of performing experiments in multiphase flows, just to understand the effect of the, uh, the effect of the two phase velocity separately. Quite expected as we increase the gas velocity, we would, we would come across the typical Taylor flow or slug flow, whatever you call. This case also, we come across something of this sort, but if you observe very closely, we find that although in both the cases, the pattern is characterized by a periodic flow phenomenon, but the shape of the bubbles are completely different, 
while it was rounded on both sides in this case the curvature is in the opposite direction for the tail and the nose in the hydrophobic tube case. Thus identical thing can be observed for the asymmetric bubbly flow also because in this particular case in order to minimize the contact of liquid with the wall the morphology has to assume this particular shape. Again we keep on increasing the annular flow sorry the gas flow naturally the gas coats they start coalescing with one another and they form or they try to form a continuous core of gas pushing the liquid towards the wall to form an annular film and naturally at the transition region what do we have? We have necking of the gas core by liquid plugs where the liquid plugs they can form a ring shaped structure or a liquid lump as we have already studied. On the other hand in this particular case what do we have? We find that with increasing gas velocity the gas almost forms some sort of an irregular pattern where liquid droplets tend to get concentrated. Now, this particular flow pattern we have not encountered till now in our previous experiments in glass channels which were hydrophilic in nature. This sort of a scattered droplet flow in whatever name you want to call it where the liquid it tends to get dispersed as, as droplets and the gas forms an irregular core quite a sort of a chaotic phenomena, but not the churn flow pattern. In this particular case although this is some sort of instability, but this has this has no parallel to instabilities in macro flows right. So, this sort of a flow pattern is not observed for your hydrophilic tubes. So, therefore, in this particular case we find the, the pronounced effect of conduit material. Same thing can has been observed or reported by other researchers as well. Here if you observe what you find, you find that when we have a hydrophobic surface, we have already discussed this particular part, the bubbles, the gas bubbles which are formed, they are quite disc shaped, they are quite large and are comparable to the dimension of the conduit. Whereas, uniformly dispersed bubbles dispersed in the continuous liquid liquid which also wets the pipe wall can be observed here. So, although in both the cases we call both the distributions as bubbly, but the, the difference in the bubble characteristics are immediately evident. Next after that quite naturally we have we have come to know from, from this uh, our three week uh, long lecture that more or less after this as we increase the uh, gas velocity we get slug flow fine. These slugs you are very acquainted I have shown this to you a number of times. Just let us see what is the corresponding flow pattern in the hydrophobic tube. In this particular case we find that while Taylor bubbles are flowing there is a liquid film annular liquid film it is there in this case also here also, but <laughs> this annular liquid film it tends to get rather it gets disrupted and forms some dry zones between the gas slug and the wall and on these dry zones some liquid droplets tend to stick ok. So, therefore, you can very well understand how erratic this looks that instead of a continuous liquid film between the Taylor bubble and the wall we find some occasional dry zones with liquid droplets sticking to them and the liquid droplets with the sticking are also spherical in shape in order to minimize the contact with the wall. And after that we find that um, at low velocities this liquid droplets are, are sticking and at high velocities they are carried away with uh, uh, along with the water. Now, if we if further increase gas velocity we find that the liquid uh, slug flow it, it is replaced by the liquid ring flow as expected. The liquid ring flow has more or less the same type of appearance because there is no way since the gas has to form the core. So, naturally the liquid has to remain as rings. The rings are much more unstable in this particular case as compared to, to uh, 
the hydrophobic case and we find that for the hydrophobic case, the liquid ring flow it gradually develops into the liquid lump flow and then the droplet flow, right. Whereas, in the hydrophobic case, we find that more or less the droplet flow is not very evident. If you can see in all these cases, we definitely have a liquid ring flow. Then, if you wish, we have an annular flow. The transition from slug to annular can take a number of paths as I have already described earlier, maybe the liquid slugs or the liquid bridges will become very small giving rise to the liquid ring flow and then at some point maybe there will be liquid droplets which will be entrained in the gas core etcetera, but more or less from dispersed we have slug and from slug we get annular flow. And for still higher velocities, we find that the liquid uh, sorry the gas core it flows as a serpentine form or it flows as a rivulet and uh, the, this particular phenomena is not observed for macro systems. Whereas, for hydrophobic tubes as expected, since the liquid has a very less tendency to wet the pipe wall. So, after liquid lump flow, it is very difficult for the small amount of liquid to maintain a continuous liquid film at the wall. So, therefore, we develop something of the droplet flow. You might recall that at the beginning of the lecture, I had told you that for adiabatic gas liquid cases, we do not usually get a droplet flow. So, therefore, whatever I had said, I am refuting it when we have descended down the scales and we have we have entered into the domain of micro channels from the macro systems. Now, for the reduction of tube diameter, we find that the flow pattern does not change much, right. We have the bubbly, we have the slug etcetera, etcetera. So, we find that the tube material has a more pronounced effect as compared to the diameter for micro systems. Well, this was all for gas liquid flow patterns. So, one thing I do not think I have got a very good picture of this, but it it, uh, it demands some sort of a discussion, a very unique flow pattern. I do not have a very good picture of it. It is the rivulet and the multi rivulet flow. I have shown it for hydrophilic pipes, but uh, this particular flow pattern I would like to give some time because this flow pattern it is also another unique flow pattern for uh, your hydrophobic channels as well. Now, in this particular case what happens is that instead of annular flow, suppose you are having a micro channel right. So, at high uh, gas or other high mixture velocities what should we be getting? We should be getting a gas core and a liquid film, but it is very difficult to maintain the continuity of the liquid film on the wall. It would like to minimize its contact. So, very frequently what happens is the liquid it does not flow as a film at the wall, rather it tries to flow as a rivulet sort of a thing, which, which meanders around the channel and it, 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 it flows like an irregular rivulet, it is not as regular as I have drawn, it flows as an irregular re rivulet through the gas core minimizing its contact with the wall. And suppose we go for higher velocities of a higher wettability, then instead of a single rivulet flow, we might come across a multi rivulet we can also come across this multi rivulets. Now, this I would like to say this is not something very common for hydrophobic pipes. So, therefore, I would just like to jot down the flow patterns which we get for hydrophobic and hydrophilic cases. This is hydrophobic and this is hydrophilic. In a summary, I would just like to jot down. The first thing is, I do not have a good photograph, but this is something very, very important for hydrophobic tubes, while we have a 
wavy type of a flow in this particular case which is not exactly a rivulet type, but it is a wavy type. Next is here we have a dispersed flow pattern. It is better to write as a dispersed bubbly flow pattern. Let me write it down in this way. File. In the previous case, we had something like the isolated bubbly pattern. The, the other differences are for a hydrophobic these things I have already discussed. Dry zones develop in liquid film and liquid droplets stick to dry zones, while in this particular case stable annular flow results. Right? And we also have another very unique flow pattern in this particular case, in where we have large bubbles. The flow pattern can be evident I think, right? that also I do not have a, this is more or less a sort of this. I will just write down. In this particular case, we have large bubbles interconnected at tube center line to form a bubble train flow. Okay. It looks something like a skewed barbecue. This particular flow pattern we do not get in, in the hydrophobic case. So, therefore, what we see that instead of a sort of a wavy sort of a flow or something wavy interface, we get rivulet and multi rivulet flow here. Instead of a dispersed bubbly flow pattern, we get an isolated bubbly flow. While stable annular flow results here, we get your dry zones developing in liquid film, liquid droplets sticking etcetera. On the other hand, since a con continuous liquid film is maintained, very frequently we get a flow pattern where large bubbles are interconnected at the tube centers and they flow just like a bubble train flow. It it looks like a skewed barbecue sort of a thing, but such a phenomenon we do not find for hydrophobic tubes. As far as the other type of unique flow patterns in micro channels, liquid ring flow, liquid lump flow, etcetera, etcetera, these are common for both type of flow patterns, common for both hydro phobic and hydrophilic and this liquid lump flow this develops into rivulets for the hydrophobic case. And I would also like to mention that in micro channels if you remember I had mentioned that the bubbles they remain more or less spherical in shape within the confined environment. This arises why why are bubbles why do bubbles why do bubbles remain spherical in micro channels the reason is that there is a very large pressure difference across the interface of the bubble due to the very large pressure difference what we find is the interfacial pressure P g minus P l, it is equal to 2 sigma by r. Since this is very large, so therefore, the bubbles they tend to remain as small spherical droplets. That is why we find the flow pattern which I had mentioned here, large bubbles interconnected at tube center line, large spherical bubbles. This arises just because of two reasons. The first reason is there is a large pressure difference across the bubble surface and due to this large pressure difference, the dispersed phase tends to adopt the spherical shape rather than the 
cap shaped elongated shaped ellipsoidal shape which we and which we come across in macro channels and this also explains one more thing which I have been repeatedly telling you that Taylor bubbles in microsystems have a rounded nose and a rounded tail while in macro systems they have a rounded nose and a flat tail. The primary reason is because the pressure difference due to capillarity it is very high. So, from young Laplace equation we find that the stable shape has to be a it has to be a circular in order to be stable. The other thing is because of the rigidity of the microstructured bubble. So, once formed they do not tend to change their shape. So, this is one thing which you should be remembering while trying to understand two phase flow through micro channels. Well, now let us go to oil water flow patterns. Do we expect anything extra or anything different in this particular case or is it more or less similar for um, your uh, air water cases. Okay. So, we had uh, we have the not rather we did not do this particular uh, you can refer to this paper for the for further investigation into the results. The Salim et al he had done they performed experiments in two particular conduit materials one was quartz which which as we know it is it has a higher contact angle with water as compared to glass, but in both the cases we find that the experiments were performed with an oil and an water and in both quartz and glass we find the contact angle is lower for oil as compared to water which shows that, that it will be a natural tendency to for oil to wet the flow patterns. And uh, we had taken a square quartz channel and a semicircular glass channel. And of course, the range of experimental parameters I have also mentioned. Now, just try to understand one thing. When I was trying to discuss the uh, flow patterns for gas liquid and liquid liquid case cases in conventional channel, conventional conduits during my introduction on multiphase flow, I had mentioned one thing very clearly that is that for oil water or liquid liquid flows either of the phases can wet the pipe wall. <coughs> As a result <coughs> what happens is we can have <coughs> either of the phases dispersed in the <coughs> continuous phase it can be <coughs> oil dispersed in water, it can be water dispersed in oil. <coughs> this depends upon the <coughs> proportion of the two phases in macro channels. Along with that <coughs> in micro channels it also depends upon the wettability of the two phases. <coughs> and unlike gas liquid cases in this case either of the two can wet the pipe wall number one. The wettability can be engineered by <coughs> modifying the surface number one. Number two that we can start experiments either <coughs> with oil first where the channel wall will be wetted by oil or by <coughs> water first where the channel wall will be initially wetted by water and oil is introduced. Very interestingly we found in this particular case <coughs> where experiments were done with horizontal micro channels we found differences in flow patterns when we performed experiments in glass and quartz micro channels. We also noted that the researchers had reported differences when in both the micro channels the experiments were, were performed with oil as <coughs> with uh, the channel saturated with oil first and when the channel was saturated with water first. So, therefore, that called for some more um, rather some more unique features when instead of air water which we have been discussing so long if we come to oil water cases. <coughs> Let us see what happens when it is initially saturated with oil for horizontal micro channels it was observed that the same flow pattern types were observed for quartz and glass because for both the cases we find that 
they have the contact angle of oil is less. So, natu naturally it is a natural tendency in both the cases to be wetted by the oil phase. As a result, <coughs> what happens is when we introduce water here, the water first tries to remain as droplets, then they coalesce to form slugs and finally, this is an annular flow. Please remember this annular flow is with oil film and a continuous water core. And the flow range of flow patterns have been plotted in a flow pattern map, where we find that the, uh, the transition from droplet to slug flow, it occurs at more or less a constant void fraction of 0 0.3. And we also see that the slug to annular flow, it occurs at more or less a constant water velocity. <coughs> Now, suppose we shift and we go to the, or rather we uh, the researchers had performed experiments in micro channels initially saturated with water. And interestingly, since water does not want to wet either of the channels, we find different flow patterns for quartz and glass. In quartz, what do we find? Just like in this particular case, there was droplet flow, we have droplet flow here. We had slug flow here we had slug flow in this particular case. But in this particular case, since it was initially saturated with water, we have oil slugs in water. Interestingly, after that we had annular flow in this particular case. But here the water does not want to wet the pipe wall. So, therefore, we had something we are rather they encountered something like the stratified flow pattern, where the water and the oil they were flowing one above the other. <coughs> On the contrary, suppose we would be working with the glass um, the micro channel, we observed that initially it was droplet, then instead of slug, it was sort of a semi stratified sort of a thing where more or less the oil and water they were separated by an extremely wavy interface. And then on further increase in <coughs> velocity, we obtained the same stratified flow. We did not obtain the annular flow, which was observed when the micro channel was initially saturated with oil. And the primary reason being that when it is initially saturated with water, the water does not want to wet the pipe wall, but since it was it is already in contact with pipe wall. So, therefore, it keeps on wetting a portion of the wall and leaves the, the remaining portion for oil to occupy. So, from this we find that we get completely different flow patterns for quartz and glass when they are initially saturated with water. And this is also reflected in the flow pattern maps, which have been plotted with the water superficial velocity and the oil superficial velocity as the two axes. Well, so uh, with this, I end this particular uh, discussion series. There is a very small portion left regarding the influence of wall wettability, and I will be doing that portion, and then I will be going into the discussion of other hydrodynamic parameters, namely the void fraction and the pressure drop. I think we had enough of flow morphology. So, goodbye today, and we meet next week. Thank you very much.